Good evening, room 207 students. How are you doing? Here I am with, for, we're going to read, um, do your nightly read aloud of Crenshaw. And we are on chapter 26 and I have Rossi here in my lap. And uh, it's a short chapter. For this chapter, I'm going to have you think about those feelings that you were developing yesterday as I was reading about um, Jackson's father uh, starting to play music for money next to the freeway. And today I'm going to have you think about making inferences and uh, turning your feelings into empathy for the characters and, and watch and see how that develops and how Apple, uh, uh, Catherine Applegate does that trick to make you feel um, empathy for the characters, okay? Make you feel like you really care about them and you want them to um, not be homeless anymore, right? So this, we're still in um, flashback and Jackson is talking about when he was in first grade and the first time they were homeless. Okay, here we go. During the afternoon rush hour the next day, my dad returned to the same corner with his new sign. It was drizzling again, and gray clouds hung low in the sky. I waited in the car with Mom and Robin and Aretha. Okay, so we can think about how he's feeling, sitting in the car watching his dad with his guitar, playing for some money so they can go out and have dinner. My mom had just gotten off work at Rite Aid. She said two people were out sick, which meant she was the only cashier. People in line were grumpy. She said, they didn't, why they didn't just read the Inquirer and wait their turn? Why didn't they just read the Inquirer and wait their turn? That's a, that's like a little paper kind of magazine that's usually by cash cashiers and registers and things like that. People usually flip through them. A driver in a red SUV rolled down his window. He smiled and said something to my dad. They both nodded. My dad tucked the sign under his arm and held out his hands till they were about two feet apart. I'll bet dad's telling him about the trout at the lake, I said to my mom. She smiled and exaggerating. Is that the same as lying, I asked. Not when it's fish related, said my mom. When the light changed, the driver handed my dad money and waved as he pulled away. After about an hour, he collected a bunch of dollar bills. Also a big cup of coffee, coffee and a sack with two slices of lemon pound cake in it. My sign was a soggy mess. My mom flattened the bills on her lap. $56, she announced. And 83 cents, my dad added. My parents shared the coffee. I split the pound cake with Robin. Then I climbed to the back. Aretha was tail thumping, hopefully. When no one was looking, I gave her my whole piece. I don't know if that's a good idea. It was windy and cold and the rain had come back hard. We listened to the radio as tiny rivers zigzagged down the glass. A new man went to stand on the corner. His sign said, Vet, God bless. A small, poodly looking dog was nestled in his half zip jacket. I still think you should take Aretha with you next time, Dad, I said. I'll bet we'll make even more money. He didn't answer. I figured he was listening to the radio announcer. She was warning that the chance of rain was 80%, so it was a good night to stay inside. So I'm going to think about that last line and I'm going to make an inference and I'm going to think that as the radio announcer is saying that, Jackson probably wishes that he still had a place of his own. They were still living in their house. A summer day camp bus stopped at, a summer day camp bus stopped at the light. Its windows were fogged up. I saw some kids and hunch, I saw some kids and hunched down in case I knew them. Ooh. Now it's your turn to make an inference. What's he feeling? I'll read it again. 
I saw some kids and hunched down in case I knew them. What do you think he's feeling right now? Why would he do that? Someone had drawn a smiley face with a word by it. Hello, I decided, but it was hard to tell. I was on the outside, so everything was backward. Aretha licked my sticky hand. Next time, my mom said, leaning her head on my dad's shoulder, I'll do it. No, he answered so softly I almost couldn't hear him. No, you won't. Okay, what does she want to do? Right, and that's the end of chapter 26. Remember, you're making inferences while you read, and when you make those inferences, you think about what the author wants you to know but doesn't tell you in the text. Okay, You infer by thinking about what the author wants you to know but doesn't tell you in the text. Okay, And a good way to do that is to think about feelings, what the characters are feeling. Okay. All right, have a good rest of your day and I'll see you tomorrow evening.